What's up, React Native developers? In a previous episode of Can It Be Done in React Native, the one on the Apple Activity Rings, we at some point in the example ended up with this thin pixel line between our halves of circles. And what we did is that we used pixel ratio run to the nearest pixel and magically using this rounding made the lines disappear. Since React Native is rounding the pixels automatically and it's actually getting pretty clever about it, what happened? Let's have a look. Hello guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. As you know already, dimensions in React Native are expressed in points and points are represented using the physical pixels of the screen device depending on your pixel density. For instance, on the iPhone 10, the pixel density is free, meaning that to represent, for instance, here I have a view uh, of a width of three points and the height of three points. And the little squares that you see here are the number of physical pixels that will be used in order to represent the view. Once you have decimal values for your uh, dimensions, we need to do React Native needs to do some, some sort of rounding. So for instance, if I divide here the width by two, which would be one and a half point. So here we have one and a half point. React Native needs to make a decision to either round this value to 133 or 166. And the way React Native does it is actually pretty clever depending on the layout uh, you have. So let's look at an example here. I have two components and they are stacked on top of each other and the border width is of one physical pixel line. So you can get the uh, physical uh, pixel dimension using stylesheet.airline width, which is equivalent to one divided by the pixel density. So pixel ratio dot get. And in the case of the iPhone 10, here we have a pixel density of three. So it's going to be 0, 033. So I have a decimal value of 187.5. So React Native needs to decide to either round this value to 0, 033 or 0, 30, uh, 66. And if this rounding happens, I expect, so if it's rounded to 0, 033, I expect, so my height of the container is size times two, which is equi um, equal to 375. So it's a uh, uh, integer, uh, integer value. So I expect either it's rounded at the bottom and I should see a thin green line appear at the bottom or it's rounded to 066 and I should see the red line here disappear depending on the rounded on the rounding either we rounded by down to one physical pixel or we rounded up to one physical pixel so we should either see the green a green line which is the background of the parent container or we should see the border color uh, the border weave here at the bottom disappear or at the top and you see that here this is not the case the layout is displayed as expected. We see the borders perfectly. So what happened? How did uh, React Native manage to be able to display this layout as expected? So we can add a uh, log on on layout to try to find out what happened. So we get native event as parameter, and I'm just going to put a console log on it. So let's have a look. And so what happened here is that you see that the element at the top is rounded to 0, 066, but the second element is rounded to 0, 033. So the total height of the two elements is matching uh, 375 and therefore um, the layout looks pixel perfect, even though you know that one here has one physical pixel line less than the other. 
but with the borders and everything, you cannot tell. So React Native is really getting clever about doing this rounding. I feel like two, two years ago, this was not the case. I remember working on a project um, in React Native and we had to do some of the rounding ourselves. And I don't think that back then, uh, React Native was getting so clever about doing the pixel rounding. I could be wrong, it's just an impression. But in the Can It Be Done in React Native video, we had to do this uh, rounding ourselves in order to get the expected layout. So what happened there? Let's have a look. So let's say these two components here are representing our halves of circle. They are stacked on top of each other. I'm going to remove the fixed uh, height on the container size, remove the overflow, set the background color to be red, and I'm going to remove the border here. So you see the two components are stacked on top of each other, no problem. And what I can do here is that I want to center the two components in the middle of the screen, like we did for the halves of circles in the video. So I'm going to do justify content center. And you see here a thin red line is appearing like in our example. So this is the background color of the container that, that you see here. So what happened exactly? Well, if we look at the layout value, we see that one, con so the container at, at the bottom is rounded to 066 and the one at the top is rounded to 033. But, and I guess it's because of the uh, justify content center, I don't know how the layout is calculated, but I can only guess. So if we look at the Y value of the um, bottom component, we see that the value is rounded to 066, even though the height of the previous component is only by 033. And this is why you see this extra pixel line. And what I assume happens is because of the centering, the total height of the element is taken. So here we have three, uh, 375. The value is divided by two, rounded to 066. And therefore, we have this line here. And so what we can do, like we did in the video, is use pixel ratio round to the nearest pixel because then we take over the pixel rounded, rounding in order to really display the layout we intend. So I'm going to round this one to, which is going to round to 187.66. And you see here, they uh, display properly. So here we have, um, the height is going to be a little bit bigger by one pixel, by one physical pixel bigger uh, than uh, 375. And it's because we uh, rounded to uh, 066. But now the elements are perfectly uh, stacked on top of each other. So I hope you find this example useful. Most of the time, uh, you don't have to think about it, which makes it even more difficult uh, once uh, such a bug uh, occurs like it did in the video because it's hard to, it can be very hard to track down because values, dimensions can like trickle down into uh, many components and have like different uh, uh, level of uh, computations. You get one value somewhere which gets uh, passed down to some components which uh, derive some other values. So it can be uh, very tricky to debug. Plus you might have, for instance, an iPhone 11 Pro uh, which has a pixel density of three, you divide the width of the screen by two, you get 200, so you're not going to get any rounding issues. And then, so you think maybe that uh, everything is great, but then you have, for instance, the iPhone 10, where the screen width is going to be 375. You divide the width by two, you're going to get some uh, rounding issue. So you need to try on a lot of different pixel density, screen sizes. It can be uh, a bit uh, challenging sometimes. Before I leave you doing amazing React Native development, couple of things. First of all, Christophe Maguera, 
co-founder of React Native on Android and father of gestures and animations in React Native, has accepted to come on the channel to answer your wildest questions about gestures and animations. So if you have any, please send them in the comments below and I'll make sure to ask him in this Q&A session that I'm really looking forward to record. And if you want to meet uh, Christophe or the other members of the React Native community, uh, there is the AppJS conference in April in Krakow. I'll be giving a workshop on declarative gestures and animations. If you're interested to join the conference or my workshop on gestures and animations, please send me an email. The email is in the video description and I'll make sure to send you a discount card to either the conference ticket or the workshop if there are still some available. I attended the conference last year and I had an absolute blast meeting uh, all the members of the React Native community, as well as getting uh, great insights on the future of React Native and Expo. So I hope uh, you check it out. And finally, if you want to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, please check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal here is to teach the fundamental of gestures and animations. Hopefully, after following this curriculum, the recipes and examples we're tackling on the Can Be Bidon React Native series should feel absolutely trivial. My goal is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build delightful users ex user experiences that will run at 60 FPS, even on low-grade Android devices. Guys, I'm really excited about the upcoming Can It Be Done in React Native episode. We are taking a recipe that we used in a previous episode only to improve it by an order of magnitude. And that's what doing this video is all about, always improving. So I'm really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.